Welcome to the video on partitioning a segment. And as always, thank you for the gift of your time. Make sure that as you watch this video, you make excellent use of that time and make sure that you watch for understanding rather than just to complete an assignment so that when I check it off tomorrow, it's done. You really want to make sure you focus, understand, and if you need to, rewind the video so that you can wrap your brain around the ideas that are being presented. All right, I want to talk a little bit about what a directed line segment is first. So I'm going to skip that part where it talks about partitioning. A directed line segment is very simply a segment from one point leading to another on the coordinate plane. So directed line segment AB would have a starting point at point A and an ending point at point B. Partitioning means to divide it up into pieces. And we're going to divide it up in such a way that they're in a given ratio. All right, so number one says point P partitions directed line segment AB who has coordinates A negative 2, 5 and B with coordinate 6, 1 into a ratio of 1 to 3. They want us to now find the coordinates of point P. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph these points so that I have a visual of exactly what it is that I'm looking at here. So point A has coordinates negative 2, negative 5. So there's point A. Point B has coordinates 6, 1. So there's point B. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my straight edge now and put directed line segment AB on my coordinate axes. Again, since it's directed line segment AB, I'm going to think about A as being my starting point, and I'm going to think about point B as being my ending or my finishing point. I'm going to think about this change as happening in two ways. I'm going to think about the horizontal change, which must take place in moving from point A to point B. So the horizontal change there, if I count up the number of boxes, the horizontal change is 8. The vertical change is 6. So I'm going to take a minute and write those two down. So horizontal change. is going to be a plus 8. And we said the vertical change, because we're moving 8 up, or sorry, 6 up, is going to be a plus 6. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to look at how much the horizontal change is and how much the vertical change is. The next thing I'm going to pay attention to is this ratio of 1 to 3. And I'm going to think about breaking this line segment up into now four parts. And the way I got four is I just added the one and the three together. If that had said two to three, I would have thought about this as being broken up into five parts. If it had said three to five, I would have thought about it being broken up into eight parts, so on and so forth. So if I'm going to think about breaking up this line segment into four parts, and the part that I want is I want to move one out of those four parts from A going to B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of these changes and I'm going to multiply them times one-fourth. So I'm going to multiply the eight times the one-fourth. So eight times a fourth is going to be a plus two. The six times a fourth. If I need to, I'm going to get out my calculator and I'm going to type in six times one-fourth. That's going to be a plus one and a half. So this tells me that in order to establish or find the point that's going to break it into that ratio, I'm going to have to move along this line segment two or plus two in the horizontal direction, and I'm going to have to move plus one and a half in the y or the vertical direction. So in looking at these, keep in mind that with my directed line segment AB, I'm starting at A and I want to move two units to the right. So moving two units to the right, or plus two in the horizontal direction, is going to end at a uh, x-coordinate who's zero, and I want to move up my line segment one and a half. Well, I started down here at negative five, and I'm moving up one and a half, so moving up one and a half is going to put me at negative three and a half. 
So point P now, the point that partitions this line segment into two pieces that are in the ratio 1 to 3, is going to have coordinate 0, negative 3 and a half. And again, I thought about that as moving two units to the right and one and a half units up when I started from point A. All right, so let's go ahead now and take a look at another one. Number two says determine the coordinates of point P that will partition the directed line segment AB into a ratio of 1 to 3 when A has coordinates 2, 6 and B has coordinates 6, negative 10. So just like the first example, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot points A and B on my coordinate axes. So there's point A with coordinates 2, 6. And there's point B with coordinates 6, negative 10. And I'm just going to take a minute to make sure that I indeed graph those correctly because if those aren't correct, then all my computations that I put on my grid are going to be incorrect as well. I'm going to keep in mind that what I want to do as I move from point A to point B is I'm going to have to move to the right 4. So a plus 4 for a horizontal change. And then and I'll take a minute and write that down. So my horizontal change is either a plus 4 or a 4 to the right. And then my vertical change, I'm dropping all the way from up here at a plus 6 all the way down to a minus 10. My vertical change is going to be a minus 10. Sorry, a minus 16. And again, I started all the way up here, ended up all the way down here. Now I'm going to take a look at that ratio. A ratio of 1 to 3 tells me I'm going to break this line segment up into four parts. Of those four parts, we want to move exactly one of them. So I'm going to go take and I'm going to take a look at my horizontal change. The total horizontal change was a plus 4. I want to move one fourth of that, so I'm going to multiply. 4 times a fourth is going to be a positive 1. So my horizontal change in finding point P is going to be plus 1, or 1 unit to the right. I also want to take a fourth of that negative 16, the vertical change, and that's either going to be a minus 4 or 4 units down. So I'm going to go to point A, which is my starting point, and point A has coordinates 2, 6. And from point A, I want to use or move 1 unit to the right. So that's going to take me to a new x-coordinate of 3, and I want to move 4 units down. So that's going to take me right there to um, 3, 2. Another way I can think about this is if I'm going to move 1 unit to the right, I'm going to add 1 unit to the x-coordinate. So adding 1 unit to the x-coordinate of point A ends me at point th uh, a new x-coordinate, 3. I want to move four units down or take four units away from the y-coordinate. When I take four units away from six, the y-value of point A, I end up at point two. All right, number three up at the top of the next page is very similar. It says the endpoints of line segment AB have coordinates three, four. So there's point A in B, which has coordinates 6, 10. So the first thing I'm going to do is get that on the coordinate grid so I can take a good look at it. So there's my line segment. I'm going to take a minute to make sure that I graphed it correctly. This one also is asking me to find the coordinates of point P. But in this case, the ratio is a little bit different. My ratio now is 3 to 2. So I'm going to think about breaking this up into five parts, of which I want to move exactly 3. So again, I'm going to head over to the graph, and I'm going to see what my horizontal change is. My horizontal change here is going to be a plus 3.
And again, that was three units to the right. My vertical change here was a plus six, or six units up. And again, I'm going to think about dividing this line segment into five parts of which I want to move exactly three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply each of these numbers by three-fifths. So three times a three-fifths, six times a three-fifths. So this tells me I'm going to have to go a positive 1.8 or 1.8 units to the right. The vertical change is going to end up being 3.6. That's in a positive direction, so 3.6 units up. So I'm starting at point A, who has coordinates 3, 4. And if I start there and I move, first of all, 1.8 to the right, that's like adding 1.8 to the x-coordinate. So I'm going to end at 4.8 for an x-coordinate. And I want to move 3.6 units up. So if I'm starting with a y value of 4 and adding 3.6 or moving 3.6 up, I end up at 7.6. So my point P, which partitions that into a ratio of 3 to 2, is going to be 4.8 comma 7.6. All right, the last one, if you're feeling good at this point about this, you are definitely welcome to go ahead and try the last one on your own. If you're not feeling so comfortable with this idea yet, feel free to work right along with me as we work through this last example. So this one has coordinates P with 5, 4, and Q with coordinates 9, 6. And I'm going to call this point X because we can't label it P. We already have a point P. So I'm going to say find the coordinates of point X on the directed line segment PQ. So that's going from P to Q. That will partition line segment PQ into a ratio of 2 to 3. So first thing I'm going to do is get that on my graph. I'm going to go look for the horizontal change and the vertical change. So the horizontal change is a plus 4, vertical change is a plus 2. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go look at my ratio, 2 to 3. So I'm going to imagine breaking this into five parts. Of those five parts that I'm splitting it up into, I want to move two of the five. So I'm going to take this plus four and multiply it times two out of the five. So that ends up being 1.6 in a positive direction, which is going to move at 1.6 units to the right. This plus 2 change in the vertical direction, again, I want to move that 2 fifths of the way down the line segment. So that ends up being 0 0.8, and that's going to be 0 0.8 units up. So if I'm thinking about starting from point P, which has coordinates 5, 4, so here's point P, and I want to move 1.6 units to the right and 8 tenths of a unit up. So if I'm starting at an x value of 5 and I'm moving 1.6 to the right, the new x coordinate is going to be 5 plus a 1.6 or a 6.6. .6. When I'm starting at a y coordinate of 4 and moving 8 tenths of a unit up, that's like adding 8 tenths of a unit to the y. So I end up at 4.8. Alright, as always, if you have questions, you can write them down in the margin. Feel free to email me, or you can ask me when you come back to class the next time. And as always, thank you for your greatest gift, which is the gift of your time. 
I hope that you made good use of it and that you've wrapped your brain around this concept of partitioning a line segment.